Okay. Now, as, as soon as you did, my button at the bottom went, went away. Um, hello, everyone. If you can hear us, please put something in the chat saying you can hear us. Thumbs up, something. Yay, Chelsea Phillips can hear. <laughs> All right, Chelsea can hear. Yay. Uh, well, hello, guys. I am Lauren Kaufman, and I'm from uh, Livingston Academy High School. I'm a work-based learning coordinator there, and I have been um, for 11 years. I did serve on the Work-Based Learning Leadership Council for three or four years as well. Um, and I'm presenting today with Miss Robbie Castile, and I'll uh, let you take it away, Robbie. Okay, thank you guys so much for attending our session today. We hope you get something out of it. I'm Robbie Castile and I am the CTE coach from Cumberland County. Um, my position also puts me over the uh, work-based learning. I'm kind of the, I guess, go-to coordinator for the county, although I do have some fabulous work-based learning coordinators that are here in this session today. Uh, but we are very happy to be here and do this session for you guys today. Kind of what this is, is it's more of a, um, a training just to show you what some of the things that we do with Google Classroom and work-based learning. Uh, as you know, and as everyone's talked about, you know, what can we do online to keep the kids engaged? What can we do with work-based learning uh, online as schools start back? What are some of the things that's, you know, to be expected? We're going to get some information from the state about that. Um, soon on, you know, if school's delayed, can we still do work-based learning, that kind of thing. So that stuff will be forthcoming. Um, but anyway, today is all about Google Classroom and work-based learning. And so we're just going to kind of walk through, give you some uh, tools and tips. And then we also have a, a share but or a, um, a link for Google Classroom that gives you all the stuff that we're going to talk about today. So the link is actually in the files under this session. So we'll, we'll see in just a minute, like in a, a, we'll check on that, make sure everybody has access to that. But uh, thank you very much. I also serve as the uh, work-based learning regional lead for the Upper Cumberland, and I am a work-based learning implementation specialist. So it is possible that I've, I've met with your county director um, and just kind of over, you know, look at how your work-based learning is doing. Um, one thing I cannot see is the, the chat button was on. So, but you guys feel free, Lauren is looking at that. And so anything uh, that you have questions throughout this, please just send a chat, that kind of thing. We'll stop it, answer questions. We just want this to be beneficial. All right, so this today, our um, objectives as is that you will have some lessons to do that are standards based and that are online uh, for the work based learning class. And we have included a pacing guide for the whole semester and some curriculum ideas um, to, to for you to revise and you to fit into the needs of your district. And then you're going to have access to these online materials. And then, you know, it's possible you might want to go back and through this Google Classroom document, um, share this with other teachers in your county. Now, today you're going to receive a link to uh, Google Drive that includes, and it's how it's set up, is this PowerPoint presentation is in it and four folders. And so I'm going to go through through this PowerPoint what each of the four folders have in it. And then we're going to um, look at some of that stuff. Now, I want to tell you right now that me and Lauren have presented for probably three or four years on curriculum for work based learning. 
all of that curriculum is not in this Google Drive. Some of it is, but if you guys would like to, if you would say, hey, I want uh, another materials or I want another piece of this curriculum that I could put in my own Google Classroom, then we can share that. We can share with you lots of stuff. This is kind of just a condensed uh, one semester, a few things I picked out to put in if I was just gonna teach the class remotely and um but we have lots of more materials and and be we are more than happy to share those with you all right so uh lauren's everything good on the chat uh yes i've i've been able to answer some questions on there i did have one question though robbie and you may be able to answer this and it's ask um i understand we have to be work-based learning certified online is that still available this week Okay, it is not. So work-based learning recertification, if you miss the, the sign-up deadline was July the 10th. And if you miss that, then you can still get recertified in the fall. So what you'll do is, is basically the main thing you need to make sure is when you go to the website, the work-based learning website, up on the top right-hand corner is a um, sign-in and for the newsletter. You're going to get a monthly newsletter for work-based learning. Always in that is like the upcoming um, trainings. There will be a recertification this fall. It will be virtually. It'll just be a link and then you're going to create some artifacts. You're going to submit those and then me or one of the other implementation specialists will grade those and, and return that back to you. Uh, but you cannot get it this summer, but you will be able to get it this fall. If you need some, if, if you're running out and you're, you're out this summer, then just uh, shoot me or Matt Spinell an email and we'll see, you know, um, what we can do. Okay, I've had a couple of hands raised um, okay. in this meeting and I'm going to try to allow to talk Mary. Hang on. It's Mary Lambert. Hi, Mary. And I've asked to unmute her. Okay. James Johnson. Okay. If you guys have questions, I don't think I can unmute you. So if you have those questions, please post them on the chat and I will be looking at that as we uh, go through the presentation and um, there was another question on how oh, often that they, you know, what I'm sorry yes that they did tell us that in the training that you guys will not be able to have any audio we are sorry you have to put everything in the chat great okay and um, Jan Wallace had a question you do have to research is it every other year Robbie every two years yes every two years to the semester so in other words if you're up in September but you don't renew till October two years later that's okay so it's every two years to the semester okay I think that is all of the questions uh, okay for right now. So <laughs> keep trucking, friend. Okay. Now, so the folder one includes um, res just screenshots. So not a lot of information about these things, but I just wanted to tell you about some of these that you might want to incorporate into work-based learning. So I'm just going to kind of go through these, just say a little bitty blurb about them. So book widgets, uh, book widgets is if you've never seen this and you don't have to do this. We're just trying to give you some resources, some neat things. Uh, I actually had one of my teachers show me this and it does cost. So you may not be interested, but it's like $9 a, um, a month, but it helps grade things on Google classroom. It helps to sort things on Google classroom. It helps to create quizzes. Um, some teachers that, that use it just love it. And so what I did is I just included a screenshot of the sign in page if you and you can go to that folder and look at it. And if you're interested and say, hey, I've got some time. I want to see what this book widgets is about. Then there's like a little tutorial there, but it became highly recommended uh, to me to use with Google Classroom. Uh, Collegefortennessee.org. Many of you may be very familiar with this. 
And that is just, uh, that, that's a really neat program that's free to us in Tennessee. You can have your students log on to it. It has um, assessments to assess, you know, their interests. It has information on colleges in Tennessee, what it would cost. And you can, you can, you know, create lessons around this. Um, it, it's very, very useful. And then you can sign in, like I said, and it's, it's free to sign up and then you can look and, you know, have it as an assignment. Now, Doc Hub, Doc Hub is something we're going to go over a little bit more. Lauren introduced this to me and this is a tutorial or it's not a tutorial but that's what I screenshotted. Doc Hub is information on how to convert those Word documents into something that's writable and typable and to put them in Google Classroom and then that way your form is not all scattered. So in your folder today for all of the lessons that we have created for a semester long of work-based learning, there's a Doc Hub version. It's already created for you. It's already done. You just, all you have to do is post it if you choose to use it. Um, and it's in the students, there's a tutorial in there and you can print that off. Lauren will go over that a little bit more. Um, but anyway, you train the students how to use it. They know how to use the Doc Hub. And then when they do Google Classroom, your forms are not all messed up. It doesn't run like, if I've, I've done the, the PLP, which what we're here for is to help students do portfolios and have artifacts. So I have taken the PLP, broken it down, have a Doc Hub version. The student actually goes in on Google Classroom, types, it types it into a perfect little paragraph, and it looks just like the PLP does originally from the website. Uh, Time Station app, Lauren, will you take that one away since that's that's your way more familiar with that? Uh, yes, I will. And I'm going to uh, share my screen. If I can get it. Okay, so we are talking about Time Station. And I think I stopped sharing my screen. Hang on, I'm sorry guys. Okay. So again, Time Station is something that is um, super neat and I use it to track my students' whereabouts when they go to work and um, Robbie, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, I just I just thought maybe I didn't unmute myself. Okay, but uh, Time Station is something that the students use with their smartphones and they can clock in and clock out um, by using a QR code. And I've only met two students that did not have a smartphone and they were unable to use Time Station. Um, and we made other arrangements for them. But as you can see, uh, my employees are my students and I create an account for each of them uh, prior to school start, and um, I, their departments are separated by blocks. Um, but let me show you what one of their cards look like. I print these cards out on cardstock and have them laminated, and the student hovers their phone over the card to clock in and hovers it back over it to clock out. Now I know, um, a lot of places frown on students having their phones in the at the placement and so a lot of students will keep the card in their car and in a place where they can see it all the time and they will clock in before they go into work and then clock out. Um, the students do have to have their location enabled uh, while using the app to be able to see where they're at. Um, this student I'll show you. You can click on the activity map to see where she was clocking in and clocking out for the most part. Um, and I can zoom in and show you, um, I can see where she was at. And a lot of times kids may forget to clock out and they'll clock out when they get back to school or whatever. Um, if that does happen and the student forgets to clock out, you can definitely go back in and edit that time. This is also a good artifact for their portfolio because you can um, print out detailed reports for each student showing all the times that they spent on placement. And I do use that as an artifact for the students. Now, 
Um, next question is price. It does cost, but I did contact Time Station, and since I am a school, they allowed me to have a free account for up to 60 students, um, or seven, I can't remember. It was a, a certain amount of students that they allowed me to have for free. So um, that's definitely something that you can do. This uh, works for me, and uh, the students, it gives them a little bit of accountability to be where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be. Um, but again, this is just a resource, not something that you um, necessarily have to do. Um, I'm now gonna rotate over, Robbie, if it's okay, to Doc Hub, what you okay. were talking about just a few minutes ago, is that okay? That'd be great. Okay, so she talked a lot about Doc Hub, which is a way to convert your Word documents into PDFs. I have a Google Classroom and I was having a lot of trouble um, posting my Word document worksheets and I didn't want them to edit anything else on my, on my worksheet I created on um, Microsoft Word. So I can take my Word documents and transform them into PDFs and add editable fields. So here's something that I do with my kids. It's an application for employment. And I'm able to add or delete pages here on the side. I can add fields like this and where I want them to. And then when I'm finished, um, I would down, don't, I know it says download to classroom, that doesn't work. I always download it onto my computer and then you have a PDF that the students cannot edit in any way. And like Robbie said, I do use this um, on my personalized learning plan as well, because just like Google or Google Drive, this saves everything I've ever worked on. So, and the students have that access as well. So I've had students to share work with me directly through Doc Hub. Um, like this student did here. He um, shared his work directly with me and it didn't have to go through a secondary, didn't have to download it and then email it to me. But that's Doc Hub and it, it most often can be found in, hang on, in your waffle um, on Google. So it won't be in this top part of your waffle, but if you scroll on a little down, it'll be right here. Um, and it's been a lifesaver for me. So I've really enjoyed using that. And it's, um, when you check out the, um, oh, what am I trying to say? Um, the how-to guide that um, Robbie is gonna share with you guys, it explains in detail how to do everything that you're gonna need to do on Doc Hub. It'll show you step-by-step. Yeah, the easiest thing to do, guys, is go to that folder, print that out. It tells you how to, to have the students sign up to train them. It also um, tells you that. And, and then I've already created a Doc Hub version for all of those um, lessons that we're going to talk about today or we're going to show you today. Me and Lauren are actually, we, we probably talk quite a bit because um, these sessions are really fast. So please type in your questions as we go because we'll try to get through this, you know, uh, best we can. And oh, am I still in the okay, yeah, I think um, I'm answering questions on the chat. I'm sorry. If you want to go ahead and share your screen again, Robbie, and we'll continue um, on with um, your presentation. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to uh, I'll just also put in their screenshots of the work-based learning home page and toolbox. If you've not went to the toolbox lately, there has been a lot of uploaded and it's very useful. There's a lot of, of, of lessons that can create the artifacts for your portfolio. I just included Weebly and Wix. Uh, some of you may have your students do the portfolio through a, a website. Those are two free websites that I've used with students. They do not you do not have to publish them as long as you do not hit publish then that student you can just go in with with their they can show that website to you or they can share it with you 
uh, but it doesn't put it on the World Wide Web. Uh, but a lot of people would rather their students write blogs or do everything through a website. So those are just two resources for you. Um, and with the portfolio, they, there's nothing saying that you have to do it, you know, a certain way. You can use Weebly and Wix and Google Classroom to do that to get your artifacts in. All right. And then there's also a screenshot of a Google Classroom tutorial. That's how I learned. There's about a three minute video. My, my attention span's not real long. So I just went on there and watched some really short three to five minute videos. I was like, oh, okay, I can do Google Classroom through this. And that's how I learned to do it. Um, so that might be useful for you. Folder two, it has a pacing guide. I'm gonna show you an example of that and some evaluation documents, just like a coordinator um, visit checklist. This one is the same one that comes off the toolbox. It just has room for student name, location, and time, and then you sign it at the bottom. I just always in trainings tell you how important it is to always document that I went to Sonic at 2.52 on Wednesday, you know, July 10th or August 10th or whatever, because if you ever, it's just a, it's just a cover yourself kind of thing. Always document when you went somewhere and that's not on the form on the toolbox. So this checklist is the same form I just have uh, created some some space at the top for you to write that. Monthly employer evaluation. Lauren came up with this one. This is a fabulous document. It takes all of that information from the toolbox. What are we supposed to be looking at? And puts it in a, a form that a employer takes about three minutes to fill out. We know our employers are stressed for time. We appreciate them hosting our students. We don't want to make life hard on them. So this monthly employer evaluation is included. It's a awesome form. This checkoff guide is just, it's just a plain old um, Excel form, but I never let my students leave the building until all that's done. And it's just got a so driver's license and insurance and PLP pages 9, 10, and 11, those kind of things. And it also includes this pacing guide. So the pacing guide here, this is what is included in your folders for your Google Classroom. Like I said, you guys revise it, use it however you want. This is just how I broke it down. And it is by semester and not year. Um, and it's just what it's like, what I always did on week one was parent letter, employer letter, local policies. There's a copy of our local policies in there. Please feel free to revise those however you want to. There's a copy of the standards. There's PLP pages 9, 10, and 11. There's a hazard exempt form. So um, also in, in there is included like some journals, some journal topics. There's probably 50 prompts that you know you may want to use as a journal like on week three what i would suggest is have them fill out their work schedule and journal assignment and then say week six they're doing the plp part b um, i've got the original version in there and i've got a doc up like i said you may want to change this around this may not work for you it's just an example maybe it'll help you uh, uh, yes Hey, if you don't mind, I was going to show uh, a really quick screenshot of what the employer evaluation looked like. Yeah, sure. Can, you want me to pull it up? Um, I have it. Oh, okay. Perfect. If you don't mind. That'd be fine. Uh, I did, you were on a roll, sis. I didn't want Well, to. I kept I kept looking at it's 153 and I'm like, ah. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think of that. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I All think right. we can go 10 minutes over. Our people may say, we ain't staying. <laughs> 10 minutes later, but. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, um, here is the employee evaluation that Robbie was talking about. And like I said, it literally just takes our standards and breaks them down into short um, summarized bites that our employer can quickly read and run through and decide how our student is doing based upon a, um, a grading scale that I included up here. Um, and then they'll add it up and then that would be their grade. I also put on here an approximate number of days absent because sometimes, um, even with the time station, my kids 
Joe will say that they're going and they don't go. And this is another way to kind of double check that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Because if I see that they were out three days and they came to school every day for me, something's going on here. And I also like to know if my student made contact. Um, I also wanted to show you guys what my pacing guide looked like just to give you an idea of um, what it looks, uh, Robbie's looks and then what mine looks like. So you can see here the things that I do uh, in the beginning and then we move through safety of course. And then I start with uh, post-secondary. So we do a college research project and um, so on. And uh, we have class every other week. So um, that's the way my um, pacing guide is paced out. Okay, Robbie, you wanna get back on there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I have to do that, don't I? Sorry. <laughs> and my chat isn't working. I don't know if... It says I can't share it while you're you're sharing. Okay. I'm stopping share. There you go. Okay. The other thing I wanted to tell you guys about this pacing guide. Let me go back real quick. Um... Okay, down here it says on week 16, the student placement portal, you are more than welcome to do your student placement portal way earlier. A lot of teachers like to do that about week two, week three, um, because they like to go ahead and get that and then the students can go back in the placement portal and do, sorry, and do the, um, student self-assessment afterwards. So like I said, you feel free, if, you, if that's more your style, that's that's fine. There's no right or wrong way to do that. Um, we are still gonna, I'll tell you a little bit about that. We're still doing placement portal. It's gonna change a little, just the, the face of it's gonna change. It was supposed to change by this fall, but with, you know, with everything with COVID back and everything up, placement portal may look the same for, you know, another semester or year. Uh, folder three and what you're going to get has screenshots of a Google Classroom. Unfortunately, we cannot share Google Classroom just directly to you. Our districts, like the way Google Classroom is set up is it will not let you share outside of a district. So like I can't have complete access to Lawrence because she's in a different school district. But what I did was I just took screenshots, 18 weeks of screenshots, just so you could look at an example of how to set up the Google Classroom for work-based learning. Now, Lauren sets hers up by content buckets. I set this one up by weeks. Uh, you know, that's the great thing about teaching is you can do it however it makes sense to you. Um, and, and so this is just an example, but that'll be in your folder three when you get the link. Uh, this is just a screenshot of a Google Classroom how-to, and that's just where to go to. And like I said, that was those little three to five minute videos on how do I do it. Now, this is the screenshot of an example of the Google Classroom. Um, and like I said, I set mine up by weeks. You can see here on the left-hand side that, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm in week eight, and I check that off. I guess I'm more of a calendar person. And then Lauren, if you, you want to show them an example of yours with the uh, content bucket top. Yeah, sure. I'm going to share my screen again. So here is what my Google Classroom looks like. And it is, like I said, organized by topics. Uh, soft skills, job application and interviews, cover letter and resume. Uh, information literacy, smart goals, and then I put all my syllabus and class documents under one heading too. That way the students can go down and find um, documents that they would need often. So like their career practical and reflection example. Also the Doc Hub um, tutorial would also go here. I don't know why it's not there then. Um, but for Robbie, it's easier for her to do it by date, but for me, it's easier to do it by content bucket so I can find it um, a lot easier. I'll let you get back to it, Robbie. Okay. All right, so there's kind of an example, and I've got a couple more shots, but you've got a copy of that in the folders. Um, let's see, come on. 
Now the next one here, this is like week one to two. Uh, these are actually last year's dates. These are not this year's dates, but like um, you've got some, some resources there in folder four. So this is like where you put your safety video. So I just uploaded that video straight to, and it's in a form there for you in that folder to just uh, upload it straight to it. The students can watch the video on their Google Classroom and then they go in and they take, oops, sorry, they take a, um, a quiz. And so you can still do your safety training if you wish so, you know, virtually. Uh, I skipped over this one. I'm sorry. This syllabus and work and and a welcome packet. I always said this is the information handed out in class. Um, but you know, that was then this is now. So now you may have to put all this online. It depends on what your school system does. But it gives you a way, you know, to get that documents in those students hands. Uh, week four or I'm sorry, folder four has weekly assignment posts. So each week is broken down to loadable documents for your Google Classroom, for your portfolio uh, artifact assignments, and a Doc Hub version is also included. And um, like I said, if you look at that and you think, well, that's great, but they said they had more curriculum, then feel free to email me or Lauren and, and we've got some, you know, different lessons about on ev everything because just like she said she includes her college um, research and that kind of thing and that's not included in this uh, yeah we both have a uh, zipped files that contain tons of resources that are editable uh, for you guys that we can also share if anyone is interested um, we can definitely uh, do that as well All right, so we do want to say, please remember that when conducting your work-based learning program, please remember that weekly commu communicate weekly with students, either in person or by email or by blog or by comments. And please, please, every time you go to a job site, if you don't see that student there, if you go and you're checking on them and you're just talking to the boss, please tell the student, hey, I was at your, your job site and they said you were a rock star. And, you know, because students really want to know and they notice if you have not been to check on them and maybe it worked out where you checked on them, they weren't there, always tell them, hey, I went, I went to your job site. Um, in this whole new online world that we may have to live in for a little while, you may have to set up something like a, your send them an email or whatever your school district allows that says, hey, I went by and checked on this and I did this and I did that. Uh, so we just, just please remember to communicate with them, especially if you don't see them every day. Because they love to hear feedback from their employers. I also want to include, include in here that the work-based learning toolbox contains many documents that'll help students create portfolios. Uh, and you can always convert those using Doc Hub or another platform. All right, is there any questions um, coming in, Lauren? Anybody got any questions? I feel like we were going pretty good and then we went pretty fast. Okay, yeah, hang on, let me check. I'm sharing our email addresses. I've got it on the next slide. Okay, what is your email address so I can type it on? That way they can email us and let us know if you guys need something because I'm not sure how long this chat is gonna be here. So if you guys will please, please, please email us with after you've looked at the Google uh, Drive, the shared drive that is on the files there. Um, if you'll scroll up to the top of the chat, there is a files pane. If you will click on that file and there is um, a web address there for a shared Google Drive link uh, for you to view there. Now, if, if you get there and you're seeing everything you want and you don't need anything else, that's great. But if you get there and you're like, whoa, wait, um, there's things that we're, we're still wanting to see and you're just not seeing it. Uh, let us know. Uh, Robbie's email is right there and I shared my email out on the chat because it is different. We transitioned over to Microsoft Teams. Um, okay. While oh, I'm sorry. That's not your... It's okay. Um, but again, my, I'll share my email now in the chat. Um, 
please email me if you want something because um, the way this chat's working, I'm not sure that we will be able to access this after the fact. So please just send us a quick email right now, even if you're thinking about it. But I'm not seeing, I'm seeing a lot of people asking for resources, but um, Kevin Edwards had a question. How is your county working towards matching CTE programs of study to the work-based learning job the students have? Okay, so always think, is it a good placement? So answer the question like that to start with. So is this placement good for the student? Is the student learning something? Is there some of the work-based learning standards or all that, that are being mastered at their workplace. So if you've got some yes, yes, yeses to those, then um, you know you don't necessarily have to have an engineering student at an engineering firm. So does that make sense? So always answer the question, is it a good placement? And are they learning those, those 15 work-based learning standards? Now, Obviously, we would love for that to be a perfect fit in a perfect world and, you know, a culinary student going to work in a culinary situation um, or, you know, anything aligned with the program of study. But sometimes with our smaller towns, we know that's hard to do. So if you, I've always been told from the state, if you can answer those questions, yes, it's a good placement. Yes, those standards are being met. Then, you know, you, you're going to have some, some leeway. All right, and again, um, if you want any more information from either Robbie or I or both of us, send us an email um, and let us know what you need. We are more than happy um, to share any and every anything and everything we have. Um, this is what you're going to get for today. It's going to look, you know, that link in the files looks like this, and so. I've just broken it down in like weekly assignments, you know, week four has PLP pages one through three and a PDF or a doc cup. So that's just, you know, that's just an example. That's what you're going to get through that link. All right. Well, is there any other questions? Oops, sorry. Let me unmute myself first. <laughs> uh, let's see. No, I don't think so. Um, everybody's providing their emails and I reminded uh, them again just to send us an email if they want or need anything. Um, also, if you guys just have any random questions about work-based learning in general and um, you, Robbie and I are more than happy to address those questions. The uh, keyword again is Maine, the state of Maine. Uh, and I'll type that in the chat. Um, and again, send us an email if you guys need anything or, or want our resources. We're more than happy to, to share those with you. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, uh, I hope you on, got got, it. Sorry, Robbie, we have one more question. Debbie, okay. uh, we were told our students might not go out to the sites. Um, Debbie, um, I reached out to Matt Spinella last week because our uh, director, our CTE director, had the same question about as far as whether or not the students would be able to go out into the placements. Um, the next Coordinator Connection newsletter that will be coming out soon will have that information on it. Um, but so we'll be looking out for that. But as far as I know and understood, as far as if your students are returning to school, that they are allowed to return to their work-based learning placement. Now, as far as whether or not your employers will, will allow those students, I would advise you to maybe make up some sort of survey or uh, like Google form that you can share with your employers that you can kind of get a feel for how your employers are feeling about having your students to return back to work. Um, because I've done that and I've already had a few employers say, you know, we've really been thinking about it and I'm not sure that we want to take on any students this semester or this year, just for the simple fact of what's going on. So you may want to fill out your own employers and see how they're feeling about that. And we also need to make sure that you're, you're checking that insurance, um, you know, especially if students not being paid, 
that they have accident insurance to cover the student mm -hmm. uh just document that and then we need to document the workers comp um you know especially if if we if they're working during these times uh anytime but especially now um, um let's see uh, Michael Hoops, um, where do we find the link that you showed us? If you will scroll up in the chat pane all the way to the top where it says files, and you will see a PDF of a Google Drive link that shows you, that will connect you to all the information that we shared um, today. Um, Rosanna Giles asked, when you say document it, you mean on PLP page 9 through 11? um also on your coordinator chat okay so you're documenting the insurance is what she's asking me i guess okay. uh, rosanna can you provide some yes that's what she said she okay. said insurance yes so just make make sure that you're checking that box down there that they do have the workers comp um and that you're putting the information in on page um, 11. Okay, and Jamie Lowry asked, can you tell the insurance again? So can you talk about, Robbie, what you said about the accident policy and okay. about the workers' comp? Okay, so um, if, of course, on page 11, we always have to fill out the insurance information on the student. Now, if a student is not being paid, they can go to work, but they must have accident insurance to cover. Um, and then we need to make sure we need to cover or document that they have workers compensation uh, or if unpaid the they have documented accident insurance. Um, your district could have a liability policy to cover this. So basically, if a lot of districts carry, uh, they, they do it different ways. If you have a student like on an unpaid internship in a normal school year that is going to a job placement during the school day, lots of times that is a, you know, it's a school activity. They're not being paid and the school insurance will pay, will cover it. Um, if you are, if they're getting paid, then usually they have workers comp and you still have to have their information that's called for on page 11. So nothing's really changed. I think it was just an emphasis of, okay, what if we don't see these kids face to face? We just need to make sure that we're getting that, you know, either verbally from the person that says, you know, Wendy says, yes, we have workers comp, I can check that box. And the kid is turning, the student is turning in paperwork and they're uh, supplying that insurance information. No, no, no big changes there. It's just when we don't see the students, you just need to make sure all that's filled out um, before that they're out there working. I hope that helps. I did not mean to confuse anyone on that. Okay, Robbie, I have another question. Hang on. Um, I have been told, uh, Rodney Bobby posted, I have been told every student must have their own medical insurance to participate in any type of placement. Is this true? So, yes. So, what is called for on page 11 is that is, that is true. Because sometimes students have had to go out and get medical and, you know, get insurance uh, if they didn't have any at all. And Rosanna asked if they don't have insurance. So if they don't, you can work with your school counselor. Um, if they're under 18, then most likely they'll get cover kids. Um, if they're over 18, then they may have to go out and get some type of, of policy. Um, that's what they're supposed to do. So before they can go to work. Amanda Jury asked if they are unable to get their hours due to facilities, not letting them work due to COVID-19. What happens if they are unable to get their hours due to facilities, not letting them work due to COVID-19? Okay. So um, if they have a job at all, then they could get a credit. But if you've got a student who's who's laid off, 
I don't, I don't know exactly what she means by hours. There's nothing in the policy guides that says a student has to have a certain amount of, of hours. Now it's in our district's local policy guide just for our locally, I want the students to have 10 hours a day. I mean, I'm not sorry, a day, a week, 10 hours a week. But um, if, if they're laid off, then technically they won't get a credit for work-based learning unless you work out something and they can do extra, you know, work through this Google Classroom or you're, you feel something like that they're gonna get a credit. Oh, so, she's talking about clinical internship. Ooh. Oh, okay. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about that one. That and would I think, be Amanda, I think Sloan Hudson, if you have her email, um, wouldn't that be the person that she might need to talk to, Robbie? That, and I think Matt is going to, in the, in the, he's going to come out with a little bit of guidance on those type things too, because that, if it's clinical internship and they can't go, then they may not be able to offer that class for a semester. Um, if it is nursing ed, then the department, I want to call it D, D and whatever the department is there that Terry works at, they were given some leeway on that, but it had to be written from her office. But if it's an actual clinical internship and they can't go, you know, that that's kind of a district too. You've got to, you've got to talk to the state and your district. Is your district going to allow that? And you got to talk to your CTE director. Are we going to allow this class to be on the schedule right now? Okay. Um, Theron Strickland asked, oh, Amanda said, thank you. Okay, great. Theron asked, students who are working towards the schema need that work experience. How does WBL work for them? So, it, is he mean, so I think you're meaning all together if you're maybe new to WBL, but with work-based learning, if you look at the policy guide and that's on, that's in the toolbox listed on the homepage there, um, your- if He said if they can't go off campus. Oh, okay, if they can't go, now they can do an on-campus type work if you place them um doing some type of duty if you definitely if you have any kind of school-based enterprise but if you are allowing them to work um in the in the cafeteria so i don't know what all is going to be allowed in, in each school but if you allow them to uh work in a classroom as a teacher's aide even uh that so you can get creative with that as long as your school building allows it and with the schema you know if there's there's no set hours so it depends on what how many how much you can get them to work so in other words what i'm saying is is what if you did place them somewhere for um a couple weeks and they worked off campus then they come back and they worked on campus um then all that would count You still there, Lauren? Yes, yes, I am. Sorry. Okay, so Josh Easton asked if a student works for a local farm, will the farm owner have to carry workman's comp? Now, Josh, uh, local farms have their own, because they are agriculture, um, that certain things don't apply to them. Am I correct there, Robbie? Yes, yeah, as long as your student has insurance, um, then they don't have to carry workers comp because if they've got, I think it's, it's either five or three or less employees, mm -hmm. they may not have workers comp. As long as that student's got, got insurance, then that's fine. We have yeah. those farm placements. Yes, because it is an agriculture placement, Josh, that, yeah. that is exempt from that rule. Anybody else have any questions? All right, guys, like we said before, um, take our emails. I cannot wait to hear from you guys. I'm sure Robbie feels the same way. Um, and just reach out and let us know if you need anything. Oh, wait, got one more question. <laughs> Jill Wingo asks, do you know where to find that information written about agricultural placements being exempt from insurance? Okay, Policy Guide has, um has all of that. So I'm trying to 
think if I have a copy of the policy guide, I should. But anyway, go to the homepage and it's 28 page policy guide. Policies are on page 14 through something. Um, and it does talk about agriculture in there. And only thing you do is on page 10 at the bottom mark non-workers comp, have the student's insurance information. And, you know, as long as it is a, you have to deem it a safe agriculture, you know, they have to have a mentor. You don't want the student out just, just willy nilly out there uh, bailing hay by themselves or something. But as long as, you know, you visit, if they've got a mentor there, you work with your ag teacher on that, if they think it's a good placement, uh, but it's, it's in that, what you'll need is in that policy guide, email me if you cannot find it. Um, let's see. Anybody else? I just want to give them plenty of time because I know when I was typing back in the chat, it was taking a few minutes to post. So I just want to give them. Yeah, I, I know. And I think, I think they cut us off at 225. So we're okay. We got five minutes before they would cut us off. So they told us we could go 10 minutes over. Anita asked, I'm new, how many of these sessions should I attend this week? Anita, attend as many as you feel are helpful to you. Um, typically, when we come in person to CT Institute, it's, it's pretty much like an 8.30 to 2 kind of thing, and there's all different kinds of sessions that you can attend. Um, and so, our session's the same, though, because we, right. we're repeating this. It's, there's going to be nothing different. New questions tomorrow, but nothing different. <laughs> yeah, nothing new, same stuff. We, we invite you back, but... Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, the keyword is mine. It is on that screen. Uh, Bonnie asked, where did you say we can find the book that you are all referring to in this presentation? Hmm. Book. Um, I don't use a book. We... Robbie and I both uh, just use things that we find online. Now, if you're asking about the uh, PDF that we shared with the information on it, again, it is up um, above the chat in the area listed files and you would click on that PDF. Oh, page number, sorry, Bonnie. She was referring to the policy guide. Okay, policy guide is on the work-based learning homepage. And it's on, there's a screenshot of the homepage in folder two. Uh, but anyway, it's just work based learning homepage and the policy guide is, is a link in that. There's yes. a, there's, there's two guides. There's an implementation guide and a policy guide and policy guides listed under there. And Bonnie, we had had a question about agricultural placements and they were wanting to know where that was in the policy guide. And so that's why we were talking about page numbers. Yes. I'm sorry. I was just trying to be a little more specific. <laughs> It's okay. Amy, yeah, I start I start talking to this screen and it won't talk back and I don't know. <laughs> I know it is really weird talking into this and not being able to like see people. Yeah. And people talk back. Uh, Amy Gentry, um, I'm sorry you couldn't join. That stinks. But we will be coming back on tomorrow. What time, Robbie? Do you know right off the top of your head? Uh, tomorrow is 11:30 to 12:15. Yes, and Amy, we'd love to have you back. Um, well, we're here every day at some time or another. <laughs> yeah, um, and even if you can't join then, Amy, and you, your tech isn't really working for you, then we can definitely figure something out and get you information. Sure thing. And then we'll also be here Wednesday from 11.30 to 12.15, Thursday 12.30 to 1.15, and then Friday 10.30 to 11.15. So yes. um, any of those times you guys can join if you didn't get to catch something today. Oh, Bonnie said she can't. Hey, Bonnie, uh, if you can email one of us, um, if you can, can you see the uh, the last slide there that Robbie is uh, displaying? Can you see that and email us? And uh, Robbie can share um, that Google Drive file with you directly. Great. Okay, she just sent us an email. Okay. Yeah, sure. She was having trouble accessing that information. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to have to mute just a minute. I don't see any other questions, Robbie, if you want to wrap it up. 
Okay, yes, thank you guys. I think they're gonna kick us off here in about a minute. So we appreciate it so much and we'll see you, hopefully see you in the future. Thanks, bye. Robbie, are you still there? Nope. Okay. 